it would be typically say a one room or a hall kitchen where two generations would be living so the woman her husband her children and her uh, most likely her in-laws so her husband's parents would be living in that uh, most of these will be informal settlements thereby meaning that they may not have the legal recognition by the government as to be you know the the rightful residence or the uh, legal residence of that house even though they will have documentation and they would have paid and if for all practical purposes they are legal residents of the house but uh, the government services like water toilets electricities will not go to them so what would it mean because for the woman is the one who shoulders the responsibilities of keeping the household running so in these houses she would have to really get up early 2 a.m 3 a.m there will be long queues because there will be one water point in the slum where you will have to go collect water for the entire day of bathing washing cleaning cooking so you you have you have to be the first one to get up uh, because of the if you have to uh, you know go and defecate in the open that means you may have to get up even earlier to uh, ensure that you would do, you are not in the sight of the men of uh, the slum because of the associated shame of being seen as defecating in the open so her life because of these as basic services that she does not have in the house she lives in burdens her manifold and after that most of our women are then doing the cooking taking the entire caregiving role at home so if you have elderly parents in law you are supposed to cook for them take care of their medical needs you have young children you have to you know uh, send them to school if they are going to school or otherwise you know prepare their meals take care of them and on top of these uh, the, these women are doing some kind of an income generating activity so whether it would be stitching like this kurta or a salwar that they will be providing to uh, you know a cloth vendor who would be further uh, selling it or uh, cooking pickles or papad or and then uh, you know supplying it uh, to two shops so uh, so this is typically the kind of uh, you know a, a, a li the life that they would be leading now the role mht has played in partnership with the ahmedabad municipal corporation is to delink your uh, tenancy or your property rights with access to water and sanitation the slum networking project was uh, a pioneer uh, project in ahmedabad where uh, for the first time the slum dwellers were looked at as a client and not as you know as a beneficiary what that meant was that uh, it recognized uh, the need to provide them with basic services uh, there were a package of seven services that were included that were seen as uh, critical to maintaining a dignified uh, quality of life including water toilets electricity and um, uh, it delinked your property rights uh, from accessing these services for uh, slums on private land now 75% of the slums in uh, ahmedabad were on private land so they could be eligible to access these services and here they had to, there was a co-payment model where the ahmedabad municipal corporation paid some part the slum dwellers paid for some part and then there was uh, mht uh, organized community based organizations which did the organizing and the linkages uh, across to ensure that these services reached the people this was an excellent example that the poor are willing to pay for services that they feel are critical and important the second major uh, you know takeaway or something that it helped establish was to be able to delink uh, tenancy land rights property rights for slum dwellers uh, in accessing basic services